So, never people have, sorry, the power people have taken off the lights and all the generators are on and they want to destroy my video, but it's not going to work. I mean, it's such a good mood today. <laughs> okay, so I'm in a good mood today because today is World Sign Language Day. Yes! <laughs> okay, so today is World Sign Language Day. Um, sign language, this is how you sign the word sign, sign language. And basically, and I also have a mouth code. Yeah, it's just one of those days. So basically, I love sign language. Um, I just took on a short, a basic sign language class where I just learned like very simple things like um, people, weather, the letters, numbers, um, pr uh, what I just called pronouns. I mean, uh, pronouns, yeah. So I learned all those type of things and I learned how to make a lot of basic sentences. So if I do meet a deaf person today, I will know exactly what to say and it is awesome. I am so happy. I've always been intrigued by sign language because Sign language is the only language that is spoken without speaking. Does that make any sense? So basically, there's no talking, but you are communicating very well. That is, if that is not, if that's not a miracle, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It is awesome. It's everything. Like, wow, how do you sign? How do you talk without? But that's it. Anyway, so I'm taking the class. It's beautiful. You should know it. So today, I'm going to be sharing some very interesting facts about sign language. And I'm hoping that you guys will stay on track, despite all the not uh, gen. That's why all the gym making noise on the streets today, okay? So, let's begin. <laughs> okay, so according to, yes, I have my beautiful trusty part, by the way. According to, number one, yeah, should I put them in numbers? According to um, Oxford's Dictionary, I'm going to this um, definition of sign language. Sign language is a system of communication with visual gestures and signs as used by deaf people. Okay, so... Um, more often than not, at least before I, I started learning language, I assumed sign language was always just about the hand, right? It's just use your hand, say what you got to say, and move it on. But it's not just the hand. The whole body is involved. When they say 100% body language, 100% body language, the way you say something, your facial expre expression is more important to the person you're talking to than your hand, this thing. Like, you can't be, you know like how we try to be sarcastic sometimes, say something like, sorry, sorry you. You know, it's like you say sorry, I eye the person. If you do that to someone that is impaired, someone that doesn't hear, someone that is deaf, I think you, you, the person has, you've lost the person because the person cannot hear you. You get. Now, when you want to say sorry, let me just give you some small tips, um, um, sign tips that you can use when you see a deaf person, right? When you want to say sorry, there's a, you make a face, make sure that the thumb is in front, then you do this, right? But your face matters. You don't go sorry. Mm -mm. Sorry sorry do you understand sorry whatever works for you let your face show that you're actually sorry um the interesting thing that you find out about deaf people is that they're just like you they are just like you they're ambitious they're fun they like to enjoy themselves they just can't hear so nothing is wrong with them mentally they are fine there are a lot of horrible stereotypes that come with deaf people and sadly i believed one of those things when i was growing up they said that most of them are quick tempered because you cannot hear them they get to and I've met, trust me, in this short training I did, I met a lot of people and they're generally very cool and very nice people. They want to chill with you, they want to hang out with you, they want to talk to you, they want to be, they want to be involved in whatever happening. Do you know deaf people sing? Yes, they sing. Ser seriously, I signed a, mu a, a sound, a music for them and it was beautiful. Anyway, so what did I say first? Definition of um, sign language. So that's Oxford's Dictionary. There are several other um, definitions of sign language but they are pretty much the same thing it's just signs and gestures that you can use to communicate to people that are deaf or people that can't hear meanwhile the sign for deaf is this okay if you do this the deaf person and the person is educated the person will know exactly what you're saying can't you hear are you deaf they be like yeah it's true so Back to my part, let us talk. I've said number one, number two. Okay, yeah, so number two is 23rd of September is sign, World Sign Language Day. Now, World Sign, sign Language Day, that's turning 23rd into World Sign Language Day was established by the UN in 2017. Now, the thing is that um, the week, though, that's this 23rd of a week, I don't quite know how it was arranged before, but it was a week that was defined as the week of the deaf. It's been there since the 50s, so that has been celebrated. So if you actually go to the UN calendar, you would see World Sign Language Day is today, that's 23rd. 24th would be World Sign Language Day for children, One Sign Language um, Day for people with other disabilities. So the whole week actually is literally about sign language. So yes, it's an interesting, it's a party week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
me, I want to party. I mean, see you guys, I got dressed now. Look at me. I'm trying to wear the sign language color, but this is not the color. Sign language color is like a very nice, um, like a lighter blue, it's a much lighter blue, but I don't have lighter blue, so I want my turquoise because I just want to join the party. <laughs> I just want to join the party. Anyway, so the thing for this year, 2019, is um, sign language rights for all. People that are impaired, they have rights just like you. They are entitled to, like I said, they're ambitious. They, some of them want to be lawyers. Some of them want to be accountants. Some of them want to be um, just just about every other thing every person is. They want to be. They want to as much. They want to be included as as much as possible in the society. All of them are not beggars. Just because you say sign language person, they time to go. Hey, yes, for you. No. Some of them don't even want to be pitied. They just want to be treated. Most of them actually not even some of them. Most of them want to. Be, they want to be treated like normal hi how now you know they want to smile and they want to talk to you they want to communicate um they, most of the educated ones can write if you don't if you if you are patient enough with them you can literally write something and give it to them to read and they'll read it back to you and it's all good i'm sorry and they will write back to you and really it's all good but sign language is really the more jisha i must say so that's that's one other fact another fact is the history of sign language dates back to the 17th century now the thing is that the the sign language that we use now is a much finer. Yes, it's been as in, it's, it's been accepted more by the world because of more people that need to hear them. Like if you're watching a sports channel and somebody is signing, and if everybody is using their own sign language, that means that person signing would not be understood. Do you understand? So it's more a general. There's a sign language. It's called the ASL, American Sign Language. Uh, that's the more accepted one. But the thing is that. For every place you go to, there are small, small things that change them. Like the Nigerian one, I noticed that they try to initialize. Now, initializing is usually when you use the capital letter of a word. Now, I, I told you that they are, sorry, let's mention it before, I don't remember. They are, sorry, they are, this is A, this is B, this is C. Now, if I wanted to say cross, this is cross, which is the sign of a cross ball. I'm using the C letter to do it. That is what initializing is. Initializing is when you use the capital letter of a, of a sign to sign. Now, I imagine if you went somewhere else and did this, someone knows exactly what you're saying. This is a cross. But more often than not in Nigeria, more often than not, people try to initialize more often than not. So, um, so sign language was introduced to Nigeria in the in 1960s. In the western part of Nigeria, the place where most of the education in Nigeria came from anyway, the western part of Nigeria. Yes, so it was introduced by Andrew Foster. Andrew Foster was actually a, um, an African-American who was deaf but he was a missionary so he basically came here and started teaching kids that couldn't that couldn't talk sign language and taught other kids as in, in school she taught that everybody sign language so that people that were kids that were deaf would be able to communicate with those that weren't and they'll be able to get their points across so thank you Andrew Foster um, for coming in the 60s and helping us <laughs> and helping us to learn sign language in Nigeria so now that being said I'm going to mention a few famous people um, or oh, not a few, just like two or so famous people uh, in the deaf community. There's Hedrick, Helen Keller. I feel like if you check anything about deaf people, you're going to hear about Helen Keller. Helen Keller was a political activist. She was an author. She wrote several books, right? Baby girl was deaf. Do you understand? She's late now, by the way. And she was a lecturer. But get this, she was the first, she was the first of her kind, that she was the first deaf person to get a bachelor's degree in art. And get this, she was deaf and she was blind. Baby girl. <laughs> People can inspire shallow. Like, I look at her, I'm like, ah, she's doing something. You know? ah, I don't know, she's good. Anyway, so yes, Helen Keller is a name that you're going to hear of a lot because the woman was amazing and she wrote several books. Like, you can go and Google it or do your research. She's written, I think she wrote, at least I, I, have, I have an idea of like six. There could be more, but I know of six, including her own life story. And she, she couldn't see. And she, was, she got the Bachelor in Arts. Which is good. Then the famous Beethoven. Now, Beethoven, there's been a lot of misconception with Beethoven. When I was younger, I heard Beethoven couldn't hear at all. But apparently his um his um hearing Beethoven, sorry, was a was a was a world composer. He, he was German, but he was a composer and I mean if you Google you'll find his sounds, you know them. I'm telling you you've heard them somewhere and um he's he, he was I heard he was deaf. But apparently his his hearing um significantly deteriorated um, when he was younger, that's I think in his thirties or so, uh, like to sixty percent. Then when he was about maybe about, um, I think fifty or seventy or fifty or sixty or so, 
he became totally deaf. So during his composing years, he didn't hear well. And he was able to make the beautiful music that he made. Like Beethoven is the bomb. How was he doing? It? Like, how? Why did that guy live in my head? My dad, I want to be able to talk to him. Like, how are you able to die? He can't hear. And he was able to comp to compose such beautiful, magical sounds. God is awesome. Bear that in mind. Okay, so three people I mentioned. Uh, Andrew Foster, he Helen Keller, and Beethoven. Three wonderful deaf people among so many other people that are doing awesome things. There are several of them. I'm telling you about these three. I want to take because I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible. So, now, let's talk um, a bit of a statistics. That's data. 5% of the world population is deaf. Now, I imagine in the pie, you look at, or if you understand, you feel like 5% is very small now. You know what's 5% of? 5% of 1,000 Naira is what? I don't even know the mass again. But it's very small. But then, when you talk of a whole world population, we're talking about 466 adults and 34 children. No, 466 million adults and 34 million children. That is a lot of people that cannot hear. That is how this helps us to understand the importance of uh, working with the deaf people. They are everywhere in the world. So many of them out there trying to do the most, very inspired, trying to do what they have to do to be who they are, and you know, we cannot really ignore them, they are there. So, in Nigeria, let's, let's read the facts in Nigeria now. In Nigeria, there are seven million people that are deaf or suffering from some kind of hearing impairment. Now, I actually happened to work with, with someone who was, um, who was um, impaired, hearing impaired, and some, but she wasn't totally deaf, she wore hearing aids, but even with the hearing aids, she didn't always hear well. And I found that it takes a lot of patience to be with her. And she's actually a very fun, loving, wonderful lady, I have to tell you. And anyway, I walked into one, that's basically what I'm trying to say. And she was amazing. Heidi, if you can hear me, bye bye, love. Or if you can see me, <laughs> bye bye, love. Okay, so um, this many people in Nigeria are, are deaf or they cannot hear. And the worst part is that 90%, 80% 80 of these people, about 80% of these people, are not even educated. What that means is that 80% of the people cannot be reached. Um, if you write something in a book, are you okay? And I show them the book, they are not going to be able to understand what I'm saying because they cannot even read. They are not educated. And sadly, they've been stigmatized a lot in Nigeria. I hear a lot, I've heard about some people that the whole time in their home, when they became deaf, because some people are not born deaf, some people become deaf with time. Um, I, I remember the, uh, the principal or the proprietor of actually a deaf school here in Lagos, Said that he became deaf when he was around 10 years old, between 9 and 10. He was in primary 3 or primary 4. When he he's much older now, he's like in his 50s or so. He's married, has children that hear well. Him and his wife both hear. You get. And well, he owns a school for teaching people how to talk. And he said that um, he, he's thankful to his family. His family chose to educate him despite because he knew that a lot of other people were just basically pushed to the side. They were just basically pushed to the back of the house. They don't really come out when visitors are around. They were the hidden people. And some people say, some people say things like how is the sins that the, the parents committed because the parents and the mother did something. That's why, I mean, guys, <laughs> I mean, being deaf, I mean, I feel like it's what it is. We should just take it and we should. It's a beautiful, they are beautiful people just like you. Nothing's wrong with them. Do you understand? They are wonderful people and we're celebrating them this week. And they are wonderful. I mean, people that are deaf, I mean, it's what it is. The least you can do is just be a little empathic towards them work with tax when you work with them. Okay, so there are a few bodies that actually, a few governing bodies that take care of people. There's a National Association of Deaf, um, uh, okay, National Association of the Deaf, National Nigeria National Association of the Deaf, that's called NAD, or something like that, NAD. So they try to do things like uh, promote um, literacy for the deaf people in Nigeria. I think that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful cause. The least you can do is at least get to a point where we can, we can actually just talk. You know, because a lot of times you see people on the streets, they have the plaque on there saying, sorry, I'm deaf, please give me something. Those people, there's a, there's a lot of potential there, and there's nothing we can do, they're just there. So anyway, um, those are most of the facts that you need to know about uh, deaf people. So I'll, I'll show you a few signs too that you can use when you make one. It's actually very fun. Um, but first of all, I'm going to talk about um, um, how you should treat them. If you meet them, it's not time to actually do like this and walk away. They are not crazy people. They're not mentally, nothing's wrong with them. Um, I'm not even saying anything wrong with uh, the, the crazy people. Oh, sorry, people that are mentally. Wow, I can't believe I said that. I'm so sorry. Um, 
with mentally challenged people no what i'm saying is that deaf people are actually they're just like you they just can't hear that's the thing they are deaf they can't hear that's it so um um treat them like you treat any other person if you happen to be in public and you're with one say hello um, or they say hi to you say hello back don't don't do that like who are you i'm not talking to you you crazy person they're not crazy okay they are cool they are just like you wonderful people um they use tact when communicating tact is basically knowing how you would feel if someone did what you're about to do to someone else to you does that make any sense like i was about to tell you you're crazy i think about how i would feel if someone told me i was crazy then that would influence how i would tell the person whether i would tell the person they're crazy or not it doesn't make any sense so yeah, that's basically it. So just use tact when you talk to them. So I'm going to say some simple signs that you can use. So when you want, to, when you see a deaf person and you want to say hello, this is hello, or the good old hello. But the thing is that this is also bad. It's, it's goodbye <laughs> in that. So if you do this, they probably look at you like. But um, a lot of times, all of them, a lot, a lot of everybody understands the the situation. Everybody understands what's going on. So. If you do this, they know you're not saying bye-bye because people just met. But this is hello. Hello is like a salute. Hello. Hmm? If you want to say you're welcome, you say you're welcome. You're, that's you, welcome. You're welcome. That's do your hand like this. Take it all the way down. I, I literally just push my mic down. <laughs> so you're, you're welcome. That's how you say welcome. So um, what else do you want to know? If you want to say how are you, um, this is how. Put your two hands together this how r you cross your fingers and put it near your mouth and go r mm -hmm. then you again you so if they are okay they are going to do this this is fine so if they ask you the same thing you say i'm fine but when they are excited and they're happy they tell you they're excited happiness joy excitement they put their hand like below the belly you're not seeing my hand well but that's it they do <gasps> excited you know they won't say it out but this is it when they accepted this this so those are simple things you can use when you say that person and i already told you what to say this is please this is sorry remember your face is very important okay and wishing every deaf person out there the wonderful week um we celebrate you thank you for honoring us and trying to be a part of us and working extra hard to be patient with us those that can hear that don't understand the way this world works and we love you guys okay so everyone please Stay inclusive, stay sensitive, okay? Bye, guys.